I want to talk to you about decoration on Chinese porcelain and specifically on my beautiful censer which dates to the Ming Dynasty as decorated in underglazed blue cobalt and here we have the eight immortals now on porcelain there are many different types of figure decoration taken from classical stories and also decoration of the immortals. And these are rather fun. We've got uh, Shu Lao, who's a very top god. <laughs> and then we've got the various immortals. They all have different attributes, so we know who they are. We've got a girl immortal. We've only got one girl immortal. We've got a hermaphrodite. Um, and the others are men. The girl had a diet of moonbeams, which I think is quite nice, really, and does wonders for your figure. And then there's one who's, uh, who always fascinates me, um, and he is depicted as a beggar with his, a stick here. Now, he's an immortal who used to go up and visit the heavens, and he used to leave his disciple or servant with his earthly body whilst he was in the heavens. But one day he went to the heavens, leaving his earthly body with his disciple, and he didn't come back. So the disciple thought, what shall I do? Well, like every good disciple, I mean, you, you don't just, you know, hang around with a body. So he, he disposed of the body. Meanwhile, up in the heavens, this particular immortal decided to come back down to earth and he came down, couldn't find his body. So what did he have to do? He had to search for the first good person he could enter into their body. And the first good person was a beggar. And that's why he's always depicted as a beggar. <laughs> it's lovely. And I should mention about another immortal who used to wander the mountains. And he, was, he used to ride a white donkey, but he used to ride him backwards. And when he wasn't riding him, he folded him up and put it in his pocket. And when he wanted to ride the donkey again, he took him out, squirted him with water, and it grew into a life-size donkey. So these immortals really had quite a few things going for them. It's quite amusing that the potter and painter decided to also show on the decoration another censer, like this censer. And you can see the smoke coming from it, which is rather nice. And so that's a decoration on, on our blue and white pot. Up here, we have uh, symbols just saying happiness, longevity, also a very nice thing to find. The, the actual shape of, of this pot goes back thousands of years and it's lasted. It then was made in bronze and then in, in porcelain. And scholars used to have sensors in their studies so they could have see the smoke willowing and it was all very beautiful. So it was a necessary thing to have in a, in a study when literati were working away. And that's my beautiful pot. Oh, and also I should tell you that um, in the Ming Dynasty, it dates actually to Wan Li, um, which is um, 1570 to 1620. So it's quite an old pot that's lasted quite a long time.